Hello, everyone. This is Independent Conservative. I am Ryan Bowling. Thank you all for joining me. I just want to speak a few minutes on the RNC last night. I was able to watch about half an hour of Donald Trump's speech. Now, accordingly, this was he spoke about an hour and a half. Now, according to sources, they say that that's the longest that anyone has ever spoken at a Republican National Convention. And that's the longest, 90, 90 minutes. I got through about ha at least half an hour. And um, I just wanted to speak a little bit on what he talked about and his approach. Now, for the first time that I have known Trump, that I have uh, listened to him, his speeches and I've heard him speaking, uh, th this was a different Trump. Obviously, this is a different Trump based on the fact that his life was was almost within an, a fraction of an inch being taken. And I recall when he walked on the stage, when he walked on the stage and he began to talk, you could I could literally see tears in that man's eyes. When he began to talk about uh, the assassination attempt, now he didn't begin to talk about the assassination attempt right up front. He covered things such as uh, promising to unite the country. Um, he talked about um, the illegal uh, illegal immigration, but he also mentioned how that a life, when he did get into talking about the assassination, he mentioned the life that was taken. I think it was a, it was a former uh, fire, uh, fire department uh, worker, a, fire, a firefighter. I don't know if he was, I don't know if he was retired. I can't remember if he was retired or if he was uh, just off that day. But his life was taken and they, they basically put up a makeshift uh, kind of like prop with, with, his, with his uniform. And Trump called for everyone to be silent for a few seconds just to honor him. So I, I thought that was extremely touching. And it almost brought me to tears. It almost brought me to tears. But this Trump was different. This Trump was different. And I could see the, I could see the, the, the tears in his eyes and I could hear the sorrow in his voice. And one of the things that bothers me about this, though, is that how the mainstream media, the left, have sp tried to spin this as if Trump was faking it. I mean, I think it was Joyless Reed. Uh, that stated that he basically what well, she instant in, insinuated or implied that this whole uh, uh, attempt to take his life was staged, that Trump actually staged this. This is what she was implying. And I know this is the mainstream media. I know they don't <laughs> they don't like this man. But my God, what kind of a scumbag? would get up and say something like this. I don't care what kind of money you're getting paid. No one can pay me enough money to sit up here and sit. It's amazing to me. I know these people get paid a lot of money, but come on, man. Come on. Do you really believe... People like Joy Reid, does she really believe the things that she says? Does she honestly believe what she's saying? Well, he... he, he, he I believe he... You know, Does she really believe that? That he actually plan that, that this is a this is a setup first of all i don't believe in any way that trump and his comrades if you will would even remotely need to fake a assassination attempt oh, i hate to say that i hope they don't get this 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 uh, the algorithm is going to act up on it for the simple fact that the man is winning. If you look at different polls, you'll find out that the man is winning over Biden in a long shot. So why would he have to fake his own, uh, someone to attempt to take his life? Why would he have to fake that? Why would he have to come up with something like that? The only people that would, would, that would actually come up with something like that would be the Biden administration, which I'm surprised they haven't since they want to flip. Let me flip it over. I'm surprised the Biden administration hasn't tried to come up with something like that. Let's try to create a scenario where someone tries to delete Biden to get everybody to rally behind him. Oh, we feel so bad for you. Let's rally behind you because this situation that has happened with Trump has gotten a lot of people in, in, in more of a, a spirit of supporting the man because a lot of people are thinking 
man, maybe perhaps this brother is real. Maybe perhaps he really cares about the American people. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. Maybe he really cares because after all, who would put their life on the line for something they don't care about? Who would do that? So let's assume that this is real, which in my heart, I believe it was a real attempt against the man's life. Okay, it wasn't a setup. It wasn't an Illuminati plan. Okay, well, maybe, who knows? But it wasn't a setup in the sense that he orchestrated, that Trump orchestrated bull crap. No, 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 no. If it was real... And he and he's continuing to push forth anyway. No, that shows that he's real. That shows that he really cares about America and the American people. OK, and it shows how the mainstream media is a bunch of lying scumbags. But let's get off of that anyway. I'll talk about that. A little. Yeah, this was a different Trump. In fact, the tone of his voice, the portion that I did here. The tone of his voice was very low key, very low key. Uh, you know, it, it was very low key. And I, I, I actually almost almost cried. I mean, I was like, man, like I said, I almost cried when he when he when he when he first began to speak. I almost cried because I was like, man, this this this, this guy, he, he, he's up here. You know, he basically. I'm going to just put it to you like this. He said. I'm not I'm not supposed to be here. It's what he said. In a particular portion of the of the uh, speech, he said, I am not supposed to be here. And the people started shouting. Someone shouted real loud. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are supposed to be. Here. It was it was it, man. It was something else. It was something else. And I could see the sorrow in Trump's face and I could hear it in his voice. So to say that he made that up, to say that that was all planned, that this attempt to delete him was all planned is just stupid just stupid but yeah i mean yeah it, it the portion that i did here um you know it, it was pretty touching it was a different trump and that's what i wanted to focus on the fact it was a different trump this 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 uh a take it a, a attempt to take his life clearly humbled him because in in a portion of the speech he talked about how that he, he mentioned the crowd and how they helped him you know I can't remember exactly what, what part of it was because this was late at night when I came in. I got off of work at about 10.15. I got here, got home about 10.30, and I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, turn on the uh, RNC speech or whatever until like, I don't know, 11.30, something like that. So they were already into it. Well, I had got, I started, I actually heard the very beginning of his speech, but the, but the, uh, the uh, convention had already begun. So uh, when he said those, when all those things were said, it really, really, really moved me in a way that, that I never was moved before. It, it really moved me in a way that I was never moved before. And he talked about how he wanted to unite the country. He talked about how divided we are and that the current administration has divided us that it was not trump trump did not divide us it's the current administration that divided us and i and, and that is 100 percent true and you know one of the things that bothers me i have said this before but man it, it, i have to say it again it, it really bothers me about so many black people the way they are about about the republican party and the democrat party. so many black people are so welded to the democratic party man it's crazy now why do i say that because last night while i was at my job it was time to punch out i'm sitting in the chair and everything and it's it, you know well we basically had all punched out already but we wait we were waiting on our relief me and my my uh, co-worker was waiting on our relief to come in and uh he ended up coming to me and i hadn't mentioned anything to him about politics i never mentioned politics to him as long as i've been working there I have never mentioned politics, politics to him. He's never mentioned politics to me. But I find it interesting that he came to me and was like, man, do you know that Biden might drop out? He's, by the way, he's a, he's a black guy. Clearly, you already assessed that. But, and he came to me and he was like, um, 
do you know Biden? Oh man, you know Biden supposed might be dro- supposed to be dropping out. And I says, well, it's rumored that he may drop out. He hasn't officially done so yet. Many are saying that he may drop out by this weekend. And then I begin to get into a dis- he's like, man, that's gonna be something else. And I begin to get into a dis- small discussion with him, but not revealing my siding with the conservative Republican Republican uh, nominee Trump. Okay, because I didn't want no no problem. I didn't want no arguments and debates. That has been my experience with Black American, you know, Black people. And since 2016, it's been mostly negative. I'd say 99.9 percent of that has been negative. So I don't even bother discussing politics with black people in that sense, for the most part. I don't discuss politics at all for the most part, with, particularly in the city of Cleveland, because the city of Cleveland is a democratic stronghold. But anyway, so I begin to talk a little bit about, I says, well, you know, he didn't really officially resign. It's been rumored that he might resign, step down by, by this weekend. Uh, but, and, and, and so the, my coworker was kind of worried. He's like, well, what's going on? I said, well, by constitutionally, Kamala Harris is supposed to take over if he steps down constitutionally by default. I says, but the only problem with that is, is that she's not well liked. You know, a lot of people are not in support of her. She's not very charismatic. She's not very politically, uh, uh, astute. And I began to explain, he's like, yeah, you're right. You know, it's different like that. But my whole point in mentioning that is to say that based on the approach that he made towards me gave me the impression that this guy's a democrat and he he's worried that if biden steps out of the way oh my god what's going to happen you know and, and we're, we're we're done for and i was like it's like i'm thinking to myself man oh man oh man when is a young black person or a black person going to come to me and 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 speak you know and not be so sided, welded to the Democratic Party. When is that going to ever happen in the city of Cleveland? Well, you know what? Let me take it back. There was an older, there is an older black man, but he's an older guy. He's like in his um, 60s, for crying out loud. And he's, he's, a, he's a Republican. I mean, you know, he's, he used to be a Democrat, he told me, uh, but then he's a Republican. So, and he initiated political conversations with me. I never started it with him. He initiated it with me. Okay. And then I thought, and then and, and found out he's he, he's conservative. How conservative? I can't say, but I know he's not a Christian, but uh, he's definitely a uh, he has conservative um, values, and he's definitely against the Democrats. That much I say that. Uh, yeah, that. But he was an older guy. I want to be able to. I want to see a younger uh, Black American come to me in the city of Cleveland coming to me. That's a conservative. I don't. Because that's all I'm seeing. And, and that worries me. That worries me because it's like I'm, I'm seeing videos and I'm seeing TikTok videos and st- stuff like this from other YouTube content creators and so forth showing bits and pieces of blacks siding with Trump and so forth. One particular video I saw was a comic, comedy sketch where um, it was an impromptu comedy ske- uh, skit where this particular uh black guy younger guy he was talking about how that he he was talking about uh how that trump is a real n-i-g-g-a he's a real neat he's a real n-i-g-g-a it's a real n-i-g-g-a he just got shot man and then got up and did that this this is a real n-i-g it's a real n-i-g you know how they talk in the street you ain't no real n-i-g i've had him tell me that like they come to me and walk to me, ask me for something to, to, for me to loan me, loan them my phone, my phone to make a phone call because they just got out of jail. And I say, no, I can't do that. You ain't no real N-I-G-G-A. Well, I'm just not. I'm just not. I'm a real human being, but I might not be one of them. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, he got on there talking. And I am like, and he's like, he got my vote. He got my vote. Now, that's a crazy reason why to vote for someone, you know, because you think they're a real N-I-G-G-A. But it was kind of comical hearing him say that. And I was kind of, that was cool, you know, all good. But that's just one video, you know. That doesn't move me. When I see blacks in mass departing from the Democratic Party and, and, and hooking up with the Republican Party, then I'm happy, or at least conservative. Then I'm happy. But none of that stuff means anything to me. 
It's cool. It adds a little salve, but it doesn't really mean much. I want to see blacks in mass leaving the Democratic Party, thoroughly convinced that they never care one bit about you and joining the Republican. That's what I want to see. You know, that's what I really want to see. You know, uh, yeah, man, it's just crazy. But at any rate, uh, this young man, you know, my coworker, he, I could see he was he was. He was siding with that. I was like, well, okay, man, you know. So, so, I didn't even get into a discussion with him because I already knew he was a Democrat, you know. Uh, but I, at the same time, I think he'd be the kind of person that if I actually sat and talked with him, he would be willing to listen. He's not these one of these. I, I don't sense that from him. But anyway, I just don't want to get into that discussion anymore with him. I just don't. Maybe I gave up. I don't know. Trying to convince people. But at anyway, yeah, I just want to speak a little bit about um, – Trump's speech. He's a much humbler person. Uh, I think the portion that I did here, I think he did well. Also, uh, some of you that watched the entire uh, not Re Republican National Convention, those of you that watched the entire you know, show, if you will, uh, Hulk Hogan was there. I saw a clip of him standing up giving his speech. I didn't hear the entire speech. I didn't get a chance to hear that. But I saw a clip of him and any of you from the 1980s, you know who Hulk Hogan was and is, you know, particularly in the 80s. I didn't watch wrestling in the 80s. I saw bits and clips of it. I wasn't into wrestling. I was into movies, horror movies in particular. But uh, he got up and tore his shirt off. He had his shirt. They tried to take my president, <clears throat> take my president and ripped his shirt off. And it was it was cool. It was really cool. I was like, man. <laughs> and I couldn't help but think, Anthony Brown Logan, and I know you guys know him. You better know him, okay? Anthony Brown Logan loves this guy. And I couldn't help but think, when I saw that, I was like, I know Anthony Brown Logan is in jumping when he saw that. <laughs> like, go ahead, Hulkster. Come on, my brothers. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. Man, something getting stuck in my throat there. <clears throat> I guess they, the deep state trying to stop me from talking, you know. <laughs> trying to stop me from talking. I don't know why. I'm just a little guy, man. Yeah, but Hulkster, man, he, he, he was pretty cool. The bit I saw, he was pretty cool. I like that. I like that. You know, he ripped his shirt off. He's like, yeah. They tried. I said, come on, my brothers. Let's get together. Let's. I mean, it was, it was so cool. It was so cool. But, yeah, I, I, I saw just a snippet of that. And so the parts I saw, I liked, you know, and I can't help but wonder and starting to, you know, round this up, how the, the Democratic National Convention is going to be. I know it's going to be a bunch of nonsense, but of course, the mainstream media just dogged out. I mean, they try to find all kinds of far, far right and all this kind of stuff with Republican National Convention speakers. And I mean, look, man, whatever. That's politics. We're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. But anyway, I just wanted to make that comment on that. What do you guys think about, what did you guys think about uh, Trump's speech? If you got a chance to hear any portion of it, if you got a chance to see any of the uh, RNC, what do you guys think about it? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like my video, share my video, and subscribe. God bless you all. And see you again.